working. Haha, -ha. guys, it's been a while. Hi, muted F. Yes, yes, chat. Good job. Good job. <laughs> First of all, can you can you can you can you hear the new mic? You guys like the new mic? It sounds great. <laughs> uh, anyways, guys, you know what it is. We're back on inner monologue. The return is finally here. Last month with something more of a spectrum like vibe. This month. We're gonna go back to our roots but obviously with an all new format or more like we're going to what is the core of inner monologue having this just good old chat with some people you know hey that's great chin <laughs> anyways you guys know how inner, inner, monologue go, inner monologue goes we start off with some sort of inner monologue then i get to introduce to you our lovely lovely guest tonight so I believe one of the most satisfying things within the realm of tabletop RPGs is bringing a world to life. There are so many ways to do it, and tonight we'll be, divide, we'll be diving into some of those methods. And joining me tonight on Inner Monologue is Jacko from Blue Bella Studios, who have recently been releasing content from Moon Soon. A fun swashbuckling jam-packed world complete with mystical religions, ancient weapons, and anthropomorphic creatures from 5e. 4 5e, sorry. With that said, a whole, I hope you're all ready for a night of conversation stemming from what lives in my head and now yours. Welcome to the inner monologue and let me catch all of you after the intro. So uh, our spot has changed, guys. There's no more of that podcasting vibes. We're now going to be hanging out at the bar. I'm actually taking the seat at the bar. And tonight, the bar is not lonely, guys. It's not lonely. We have the one and only Jacko on screen right now, joining us for Inner Monologue. I do have legs. <laughs> but uh, hey, welcome, Jacko. Welcome to Inner Monologue. Oh. Jack, sorry. I keep on saying Jacko because, yeah. My bad, my bad. Why yeah, well, is <laughs> my last name? But Jack, Jack is fine. Jack is fine. Um, yeah. Jacko sounds more like a, a heist name. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I, I can do, use that for my next character. <laughs> but, uh, here, hey, welcome. Um, Before we go anywhere, uh, mind kind of like introducing us to you? Like introducing yourself, I mean? Ooh, okay. Uh... Uh, hi guys, hi everyone. Uh, I'm Jack uh, from uh, Blue Blue Studios in Myanmar. Uh, we're an independent uh, game development studio uh, that we uh, that is currently working on uh, a five E set campaign setting uh, called Moonsoon. Uh, as Ben has tremendously introduced us in the beginning, uh, it's it's full of swashbuckling adventures, uh, full of like uh, 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 full of uh, anthrop uh, anthropomorphic. Uh, characters known as anima and all uh and moons uh with gods and and various various uh original monsters and and, and story hooks for you and your play uh your players to enjoy and along with uh, a, a few others added perks like uh like a, like a whole new uh our own inspiration system uh and and uh and way way too much lore <laughs> Way, way too much lore. <laughs> well, lucky for us tonight is a world building night chat. Y'all yes. have been waiting for this. Like, here's the thing, right? Like, a lot of um my community enjoy world building. They enjoy building lore. Every time I have a DD stream or just a tabletop RPG stream in general that includes world building, chat goes crazy. So um I think, I think, I think chat's ready for a night. For a good night. <laughs> uh but Hmm. Where I let's let's kind of like start with uh I I with uh first mentioning chat by the way guys a really quick um if you guys want to join in it's not like before it's not like the old inner monologue will we were well where I do my best to kind of like ignore it kinda because y'all know what what I try to do but now it's uh, it's more about having a conversation with everyone included so 
feel free to drop questions. We do have the redeems. If you want to drop more questions, just use that so that we can catch it. Okay. We know how yeah, Chad does. <laughs> I'll try to catch as much as I can as well for my. <laughs> yeah, no uh, it's. I'm so happy to be, uh, be able to nerd out like this. Uh, we we um like uh I think uh, I've mentioned before the free interview that we uh we have a very small community here in the Mar. Uh, and um, it's very rare uh, of an opportunity for me to nerd out with people outside of the mall. Mm. Like, so that I'm like, all oh, right, t- tonight, please go chaotic. Perfect. Chaotic good, but, you know. <laughs> um, but, yeah. Will there be knife redeems? There will be no knife redeems. <laughs> uh, I'll fill in the context later. But, yo. Mm-hmm. Um, let's kind of start, like, let's, let's, let's start it easy. Like, like let, let's start off with how did monsoon start because wait, wait let, let me let me show let me show chat like some of the art really quick or, or the 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 post that i made like mm-hmm. chat check this out check this out apart from jack like look at the background the art in this thing is fucking there's a lot of inspirations that i'm seeing that are not very common when you look at tabletop rpgs so i'm super interested in uh, finding out where it all all began oh yeah um okay uh, so where do I start? Cause this is like this is like a game that we've been we've been like playing for. Uh, for me personally, I've been playing this game for the past four years now, and uh, and and for uh, one of our team members, he I, th- I think he started <laughs> this uh, this world on a little map twenty years ago. Twenty? Uh, oh, so, okay. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, he 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 definitely uh, DMs a lot more than me. Uh, uh, but so he it was his original idea, like so that started twenty years ago, and and yeah, uh, and we started traveling around, and he he keep playing D and D, and then uh, we met here in Myanmar, uh, where uh, in 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 the attic of a bar, actually. It's Ooh. like just like an adventure. Uh, we we met in the tavern. That's what that's. Uh, <laughs> oh my god! I just noticed. Yeah, uh, we actually met in this bar called Mojo, uh, and uh, and there they have this attic room where uh, where some RPG enthusiasts here in Myanmar come together. But it, we have no clubs that we have no RPG clubs, no TTRPG stores back then. So mm. that was like the little niche uh, attic where uh, hobbyists can come and play. And then uh, I, I was there. Um, uh, I think it was a, a Thursday night, a little bit slow. And uh, I went up there and basically see five uh, uh, grown-up guys just shouting over to each other. Uh, I, was, I, was, I really thought, like, it was, yeah, it's maybe a business meeting. Because I have never <laughs> seen D&D or TTRPG before that point. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, holy shit, what, 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 why are, what, what are they so... Uh, flaying their hands about and everything, right? And then like, uh, and then uh, they uh, they invited me to join the uh, like sit down and watch and like I and I was hooked. Uh, so after that, uh, we I, I joined the table and and uh, a few of our other team members like uh, uh, Ty, who's our project manager, uh, and also Kevin, who's our, our one of our uh, in house art, uh, who's our in house artist. Uh, we started playing together and then. One thing led to another, and it's just like you know what, let's publish this. <laughs> yeah, and uh, we've been working on this world for the past two years now, and it all again, just like most uh, adventures starts, it all started in a tavern. God, I don't. I, if, if that if that isn't the most like, how do you say, it? the equivalent the of the American dream? Because like it's like in tabletop RPGs, because it's a bunch of friends at a table. You have an idea. All of a sudden, now you're publishing it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, we 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 started like uh, working together, uh, like because we, we started adding like a lot of like original elements uh, that is unique to our our country uh, mm-hmm. as we start playing together, and uh, like uh, like even monsters or or uh, like a few locations that we uh, we 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 discover on travels. Uh, we started putting them together. And of course, we don't want to just copy paste from real world. So we 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 uh, so we did a lot of lord lord digging, a lot of bad time stories that uh, we dig up from. Actually, I had to sit down with uh, with a granny, um, one of my friends, grandmother, uh, to get a lot of lore as well. 
and uh, yeah, and and we put that together, and and it it is shaped into this really cool. Um, uh, it's 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 a game that I haven't seen on any other. Uh, it's a success setting that is rarely touched by uh, other campaign settings so far, and mm. uh, yeah, and. And just like I said in the pre-interview, I don't know where to start. We have so much stuff we 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 put in. Dude, <laughs> uh, I was like, yeah. I was just looking, right? I was just doing my usual research, right? I was like looking at it, like this is a lot. Like, like I, I, I'm, I'm a, if I, just correct me if I'm wrong. You not only okay, so you, you have you have two guides: the player guide, mm-hmm. the DM's guide. You mm-hmm. have a campaign. You have yes. pre-generated characters. Yes. Uh, you have the moon deck, which is like an inspiration-based thingy. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, prompt role play. I don't know, like, what doesn't what that entails at at the moment. But, and last mm-hmm. but not least, you already you're also releasing adventure, and this took, I guess, course over twenty years. Well, the actual production uh, has been going on for two years now. For that, it was basically a game that we played. But yeah, it's been the going humble on, flex. It, <laughs> two yeah, years. <laughs> But, but yeah, yeah, it all it was all conceived uh two, 20 years ago. Oh my god. Uh, on a small little paper map that just started out and then tw- now 20 years later it's we have oh my god so much artwork. Uh, uh yeah. I don't know if you haven't seen we uh, you uh, uh you may have seen our map uh that was uh that was uh uh brought to uh brought to the table by Francesca Barro. And oh my god, it's so amazing! It's 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 uh it's the archipelago uh where moons would take place called the Tuch Archipelago, mm. drawn in the shape of the Myanmar map. Uh, oh, that's nice. But, but at the same time, it's very beautiful. I I can send you a link from Twitter. Um, as we move forward, you can yeah, show it, it, it later definitely, on. Definitely, yeah, definitely. yeah. So uh, so it's 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 um it's. Again, and it all started in a tavern two years ago. <laughs> um, not to break the conversation, but really quick, coming from Shin, have you ever had one of those moments where one of your players give you a bit of info that sparks this chain of inspiration to just create a new thing in the world? If if so, do you remember it by chance? Oh yeah, um, I mean, it's not it's not just like for us in Moonstone. You know, I, th- I think this uh, that's this, that's the same for uh, uh for a lot of masters or bay masters uh by chance like uh you know that meme where uh where uh the player just like the player begins like uh making this convoluted plot and you just say uh-huh uh-huh but you're seriously <laughs> taking yes. notes yes 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 <laughs> so yeah I, I uh we we had a ton of element in uh not just in Moonstone in our real table uh in our table as well well where we like uh for example we started uh uh, we started seeing a monster. We try to we're, we're trying to discover what his weaknesses are and how to like deal with this uh, big bad evil of this park, right? Mm-hmm. And and uh, it's it's based on this uh, Baloo mythology in, in Myanmar, where we have like two types of Baloo who are more guardian type. Uh, we call them uh, the 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 uh, with fangs that curve inward, and the outward fangs are the more rampaging, tyrannical, uh, ogre-like creatures, like uh, we call them Baloo's as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, and we just started discussing about it because, like, oh my god, it, uh, is this is this one of those guardians or is this like this tyrannical Baloo? And and we were not like I I I I know for a fact that we weren't prepared to have that uh, have that complexity in there mm-hmm. at that moment. And when that happens. Uh, um, I remember me and, and another uh, player just like, oh my god, this, we, we gotta find the Guardian one so they can help us defeat these guys. I'm like, and we and and the mythology kept expanding as we discussed. Mm-hmm. And then it was just like, the next day, he just had all these handwritten notes that he took down just as we speak. <laughs> we just hey. like, holy shit, you wouldn't. And, and, and we were not supposed to discover it. We only discovered it after we started working on the uh, on the game. And, and like, shit. So you didn't prepare that at all? No, no. I just take <laughs> notes from you guys. I'm like, holy no, shit. No, you yeah, told them the magic. You were not supposed to give <laughs> out the magic. <laughs> so yeah, I, I think um, this is the same for a lot of uh, dungeon masters uh, and game masters as well. And mm-hmm. and that is the beauty of it, right? Uh, when we world build, um, we can create. 
whatever we want out of our imagination. But the world we create in our heads or on our paper doesn't necessarily translate to the world that the players have in their imagination. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the players players already have their own world with their with with their character at the center, and they have the, the imagination is going to be different for everybody at the table. And the best way for a player to engage with a world building element is something that they thought of. I, I, that, that's what I feel, and and this is this is such an example of it where we just like, oh my oh my god, we were so smart, we found this out, and, I, and we outsmarted you, DM, and like yeah. But <laughs> at the end of the day, the DM just like yeah, you made this. <laughs> that is okay. That's pretty sick. Can we? Wait, wait, I, I kind of want to backtrack just a tiny bit. Okay, there's like two things I want to like touch on. So yeah. Um, first of all, who is the mm -hmm. team? How many of you guys are? Because it's like oh. Yeah, because okay, world building is a giant job. <laughs> like, it, it and then is, publishing is. is another job. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, no, please don't 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 get me started. About this. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 so much bigger than what we expect it to be. That's for sure. The workload uh, of producing the game. Uh, but yeah, uh, we uh, we ha we have we have a core team member. We have four core team members. Um, uh, we have Kai, uh, who is our project manager. She's mm -hmm. uh, she's basically the backbone of the whole project. She is the one who contacted to who contacts out to uh, a lot of our partners or our contributors, as well as like uh, to uh, to make events happen. Mm -hmm. And basically, everything you see in our books is uh, definitely is uh, is what she organized. So. She's definitely the backbone of our team, and we have Kevin Lime, uh, who is our in-house artist, and uh, and and like uh, and a dear friend of mine as well. He he always draws portraits of every game we played so far. So, uh, and and he he's been an amazing artist uh, who helped us like uh, have a, a central focus art as well. And of course, there's John. Uh, John is uh, John is uh, the DM I, I I've been mentioning. Yeah, John. Mm -hmm. John conceived this world 20 years ago, and he's been traveling around the world for for the uh, for uh, for the better half of his uh, life. And and uh, he settled down in Myanmar around uh, seven uh, years ago. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we started playing together. We started an RPT club together, and then uh, we turned it into a Discord server. And now we're publishing it together. And of course, uh, it's me. So we have the, we have four people in our core team, mm -hmm. and uh, three of us are in Mar. And uh, and uh, uh, and outside of us, we have an international uh, team of nearly thirty contributors of writers, illustrators, uh, and and and, uh, and designers as well, uh, working on the project. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa! Oh God, <laughs> that's a that's a big team. <laughs> that is definitely yeah. a big team. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it, it's, it's been a crazy ride. Um, uh, it's been a, it's it, it's just like how do I put this? Like we we thought of something cool, right? And then and put, we put this into a little ball, uh, like a PowerPoint presentation, and mm. we sent it over to one of our friends. And then uh, they just like hold on a minute, and they just start uh, working uh, working on this, and then they bounce back to us, and it's this amazing, crazy new idea, or amazing crazy. Uh, this crazy element that we added to our game, like or or even like the art, uh, which is, um, I'm, uh, I'm I may be doing a a, a, a self brag at this point, but still the art, even for me who is just uh, waiting in Discord in our, our in our team Discord, right? Mm -hmm. And when, every time an art pops up, I'm like giddy, like a little kid, like oh my god, this is so cool. <laughs> I mean, that's like that's the like most visual way of your world coming to life. I mean, yeah. <laughs> there is nothing more exciting than seeing it come to life in that sense. Like, oh, yeah. yes, players can bring it to life. You know, you yourself as a DM can bring it to life. But it's a different yeah. feeling when you see art of your world. It's yes. like, yes. oh my uh, God. <laughs> it, 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 it suddenly makes everything real, you know? Yeah. Like, it, oh, uh uh and and uh i sent i just sent you a link of uh of, of our map i think wait i may be wrong, sending the wrong link uh give me a sec uh i'm a dinosaur with technology hey no worries you can take all the time you need all right and yeah uh so it's it's been a crazy ride so far and uh i really hope it gets crazier uh once we start crowdfunding <laughs> Yeah, I'm. I'm. You, you're just making me excited for that part too, because it's just. This is a labor of love. This period. There's like, there's no other way to go about it. It's like, it's, it, it's insane. And, 
I know that a lot of people out there, like especially like new DMs who are like there, there's this new wave of DMs, right? They they're coming in from the streaming perspective, the whole yeah. content creation perspective, and I think there's a closer tie between those like those individuals who are coming in from this new wave of um, game mastering DMing with the whole concept of publishing because mm. we now live in a digital world where you know you can basically <laughs> publish it yourself and you know have a great time hopefully that's true hopefully that's true. <laughs> i mean I, I, there, there are so many I, even this year there's so many cool projects i mean uh i've seen momito's arc uh i, I played one of her games before which is called the mage and it's a solo role-playing experience and and I, I see art, which is this has this amazing, beautiful layout and art, and, and and the game has this beautiful melancholy vibe to it. Yes, uh, apocalypse, and, and and this is just one example of so many cool projects coming out, you know. Like, and and uh, so hmm. cool to see uh, this happening um, in in this renaissance of TTRPG. Yeah, that's like the best way to put it, honestly. Like fucking. Like- looking through all the new projects and all these new worlds that are just basically coming to life. Yes, we're kind of like losing. I mean, it's the internet. We're, we're, we're bound to lose that sense of, mm-hmm. um, not authenticity, but um, originality, I guess. Mm-hmm. Because it's internet, right? Yeah. Because we're, we're, we're slowly getting saturated in all these new worlds that are coming up, right? Oh, yeah. But, okay. okay. I guess yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, but, now, more than ever than before, we finally get to see them unlike you know back in the day it's something that's stuck in your notebook <laughs> maybe your small I mean, circle of friends get to all, see it all these little google docs we have on our uh in our in our, in our drive uh dots with three lines <laughs> yeah exactly uh it, it is super it, it exciting is true, no. i think i think the the uh the uh, our migration like the uh how D switch from something that you have really have to put together and a schedule where you have your location restricted and it switched to this digital uh, experience as well. Now, mm. thanks to uh, platforms like Road Twenty and and and, and uh, Boundary, and, uh, yeah, Boundary as well. And we get to be more flexible. A lot of people get to be introduced much easier. Of course, uh, we remove a lot of the stigma that, that the hobby used to have back in the eighties and the nineties. Oh my God, I'm speak- I'm speaking like an old man now. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, <laughs> I'll vibe with you. No worries. <laughs> Yeah, uh, and and I think uh, like like uh, streams like Dimension Twenty and Critical Role have made uh, this tremendous impact on how this hobby is viewed. Of course, there's also a drawback of uh, of high expectation towards mm. games as well, thanks to these kind of streams. But at the same time, is it 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 basically bring about uh, this new wave of creators and 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 and, and people who dream. Uh, 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 and and have them experienced by uh by their players, mm. and the, I, for me, it's it's still this uh beautiful uh after like I I I've been DMing for nearly three point uh, three years and a half now, and and I'm relatively uh, young in terms of like how uh, my DD experience uh, uh compared to like other veteran DMs, and even mm. for me, this is still uh an experience that I I. I that I crave for it's there. There's this personal touch of how your players bring uh, come together, and you have this seed, and they they create something beautiful out of it. And and with the current platforms and connectivity that we get to enjoy these days, we create uh, we get to create so much more than what we can create from in our just notebooks uh, maybe 15 years ago. Yeah. And, yeah, I think this is what is bringing about all this new wave of world building that we're seeing right now. And to kind of like tie it back to me this year, just a little bit, like mm-hmm. it's not to say that you know these these stories weren't seen before or they've they've always been there, yeah. right? But now, like even more so now than before, like I've, I would have never seen this kind of like, I guess in a sense in my head I would call it content, but like mm-hmm. these kind of stories where you're pulling from like local. As you said, you were talking to a grandma, like local lore, to pull into yeah. this beautiful, beautiful project, and just like thinking about that, like if, if you you would think about world building back in the day, you you're kind of like consumed with 
um lord of the rings <laughs> star wars you know <laughs> and um now we can like fully kind of indulge ourselves in like um lesser seen um um scenes i guess and uh, it, it's yeah just seeing like i'm gonna pull it back to also to the art just seeing the art is already more of enough than a step for me be like let be like yo i can't wait to world build i can't wait to do my own work and like do my own published work one day and i think a lot of people like in chat can like say that like for instance wolf shifting to wolf in chat mm -hmm. she has done she i think believe uh, wolf correct me if i'm wrong but she's basically taking the lore like celtic lore and tr basically translating it into D and D, and she's like three hundred plus pages, and you know it's ah, as as someone who can just geek out just like you when it comes to world building. I'm always in awe in like stuff like what Monsoon is doing, Sino Una is doing. Like it's yeah. amazing. There we go, one hundred ninety nine, <laughs> one hundred ninety nine pages. Oh my gosh. Uh, and one man army. She's a one man army. Oh, it's Damn. insane. Spoke like a true Celtic hero, man. <laughs> Damn. Um, but yeah, we, she we has to work together with over thirty people to like get to where we are. <laughs> uh, mad respect, right? Every time. Yeah. Every Holy time she comes in. Uh, that's your target. Oh my God, Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> She's always a powerhouse. Oh my God! By 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 the grace of Uzgard, uh, the 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 moon of consumption. Oh my God! I, I can't I cannot wait to see how the, how how your world comes to forward. I am I am such a sucker sucker for uh, all things mythology based. Mm. Uh, and 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 Celtic. Uh, uh, I mean, as you said before, right? Um, a lot of our, a lot of the uh, Dungeons of Dragon uh, creation uh, came came from uh, like Lord of the, either Lord of the Rings or or video game backgrounds. Right. Right. Uh, and and um, and it's good to see that I, I I think this is very similar to how video games have shifted in terms of storytelling as well. Uh, it's not just about oh yeah copy pasting something that would look cool anymore. Like not just a first person shooter anymore. It's not just a oh RPG anymore. It's about telling a, a human experience and you and and our mythology, our 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 local folk tales, and our um uh, our stories have a dramatic impact in in these games and i think this is what's happening with ttrpt as well uh and i and when i read uh Tino una oh my god uh, they're so amazing uh i i get to experience uh, the, the folk tale and mythology behind a culture that i would never get to experience uh in real life until i go there you know mm -hmm. uh and, and 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 i think this is the beauty of it how the scene has changed it's not just about becoming a knight and slaying a dragon anymore you can also also become for example uh a, a moon watching wizard who can channel the, the air of magic around you and basically slay a baloo where nobody has ever heard uh and I'm, I'm not saying like baloo has not been heard before but like it's quite rare to see a baloo in in D, &D. Mm. Or, or or like the shikaris which is like similar uh, based on one of our uh, like the tiger uh, in, uh, in, in the real world, but as well as a, um, a, a this factor like uh, jungle uh, spirit. Uh, combine them together, we have an apex predator that can turn inv invisible. You know, so so all these kind of original stuff are becoming more and more apparent. I think, and it's 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 an amazing time to be living through. I guess that's actually a really good, like, kind of, like, jumping point to kind of go into Wolf's question where um, mm -hmm. she, she's basically asking, seeing how homebrewing is very popular now, as we were talking about earlier, I guess, and if you can, you can translate that with world building, are there any things that you as a GM would love to see in homebrew or something that you wish uh, that has never been homebrewed? Um, okay, I, I'm trying, It's kind of weird to, to ask since you're doing it soon. <laughs> I wrap my head around the question because, like, we were basically talking about a homebrew setting turning into a published adventure, a published campaign setting. So, yeah, um, yeah, I, I think the the idea of homebrew, right? Um, back before, it's more about like before um, Five E came out, and 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 I think back in Four E and Three, there, there was there were modules and a lot of homebrew was already active back then. But it's just that um, we now have access to. The mythologies behind building a coherent world now mm. uh, we can type up uh okay how 
do I make sense of uh, this uh, mountain? Uh, you can type up D, you can go into D100 in Reddit and check all these inspirations that a lot of people contributing together. Mm -hmm. And you can definitely randomize a little bit out of it and then have the inspiration and brought it back to your table. And of course, combine it with something that's original to your world. And you, you, you already have this new, uh, new level of creation at that point. And, right. and more is like, there's a lot more uh, talk uh, and, and YouTubers uh, discussing about, okay, uh, how we can make a, a coherent story or how we can make uh, respect uh, culture and folklore when we're trying to build it into it. And, and I think that is uh, that is the big change, game changer uh, in, in, uh, in, in 5e. Uh, since it came out, uh, mm. this is this is I think this is the reason why we are seeing a lot more homebrew worlds these days that are very unique and and uh, at the same time, uh, how do I put it? That is, it's not just something you you, you find out out of a notebook. It's coherent, it's structured, mm -hmm. and it's 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 an inspiration for other DMs and GMs to pick up and build further. I, I think that will be. Uh, the right way to put it. Otherwise, you just have a, a uh, like like a a, a a jumble of notes that you would never, you wouldn't. Other people would not understand. But now people know how to make other people understand. I think mm. this is this is a big change here. Yeah. Oh. And I also see like uh, about the uh, from Southeast Asian countries like about the cultural appropriation. It's one of the big uh, big thing that we consider uh, uh, from uh, from India ex machina. I think. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll mention about uh, cultural appropriation, and it is definitely one of our biggest concerns as well because representation is um, a very uh, is an important issue in terms and like not just in, in our country or anything. It's it's, it's more for a uh, social structure as well. And for us, like this is the reason why I had to go and sit down with a granny. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm my my uh, my country has been on. Um, not the not the steadiest of path for the past thirty uh, sixty years. So we don't have uh, we have a huge uh, degree of censorship and such uh, back then, and uh, uh, and we there's not much written work that we can reference easily, and it, it it takes a lot of time to research. And and the best way to put that on paper and experience it is like I uh, we have to go and talk to people. And 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 the, these grannies who knows a lot about um, uh, all these mythologies, the folk tales, the bedtime stories, uh, uh, and they were the one who, who was able to pass on the knowledge to us. And we we take that, we we embody that, and we try to tell a beautiful story out of it without ruining the accents. The, that, I think that's the core uh, uh, about making. Um, Making a respectable content uh, mm. uh, for culture, and uh, and for so far, um, a lot of the friends we've shown so far are very happy of what uh, what we've been doing, and uh, and uh, we we show we show off the blue art uh, a few weeks ago, and and people were just like, oh my god, we we they because we, we haven't seen a good comic uh, mm. featuring mm. these kind of mythology in the past ten years. We have like two comics maybe about them. So it's very rare. We usually see them in terms of like cartoons and more um, funny way, but not never really serious. And then, then they see this art and like, holy shit, this is terrifying. <laughs> yeah. Man, I mean, in a sense, you know, the lore that we can like find in Moon Soon and whatnot could be that next step for future like graphic novel artists and like, yeah, um, not, not just for Moonsoon, I think this is I think this is happening for a lot of the D and T content that is on stream, right? I yeah, actually, like like we're the the branch is going to like multimedia kind of like arts and genres. You could I guess scenes I could say that'd be better. Mm. Is really going, and uh, that's like something you can appreciate about like the digital age of tabletop oh, RPGs. Yeah. Oh my god, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Oh, oh like uh, I cannot imagine ten years ago sitting down with somebody uh somebody out of your mar and just nerding out over a game oh my God. That, was, that was that was definitely uh that was definitely uh something that was impossible 10 years ago in our country and now oh. like we're just 
we're seeing so many works that we haven't we wouldn't experience it unless we go to the country and now we get to play them we get to experience we get to live through them mm. and ttrbg allow us to live through them you know it's not just like oh yeah you you read it out of a book you, you imagine it you embrace it yes but in a game you you interact with it you know mm. and, and and there's so much more visceral about that experience and I think, and, and and continuing to from where you, what you said, just said about these scenes becoming baseline for the next uh, multimedia graphic novels and our uh, and our comics uh, or movies, uh, I'm I'm really hoping that it this become this this is one of our ways of passing knowledge to this generation. You know, that would be amazing. <laughs> that that would be amazing. Like how movies are becoming now, right? Right. Uh, movies are a mythology that we get to look back for the past hundred years. Oh man, this is, it's gonna be, it's, it's yeah. Like, I, I'm just taking a moment because it's like, it's overwhelming to think that, you know, there is a chance in the future where, um, you know, like like you said, this like this started just on the table, you know, <laughs> very, very small. And all of a sudden yeah. there's a potential for it to become a learning like point for any future uh, people that kind of want to do the same research we are doing to kind of make sure that we're putting out good work, you know? Yeah. Uh, I mean, with, with more and more uh, work out there, of course, there will be like I, I, this is this is something I, I, I uh, as as a person who like who who is a history is who is a history nerd, right? Mm -hmm. um, I always feel that like folk folk tales and mythologies are something that is to be cherished, but not to be stay rigid. Um, mm. Mythology evolves. This is, this is how society evolves, right? We, 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 we face new situations, we face new problems or, or, or experiences, and then we try to make sense of it with the stories we tell. Uh, we try to create a narrative out of it to cope with it or, or live through it or, or celebrate. Mm -hmm. and, and and mythology itself is not just written stone or scriptures like a thousand years ago. We tell it in our comic. We tell it in our movies. We tell it in our video games. And this is I think this is also happening for TTRPGs now. And 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 that that is that is something I cannot wait to see uh, to to come to the forefront. You know, mm. uh, for the TTRPG scene. Yeah, it's. It's gonna be a trip. It's gonna be definitely a trip. Um, so coming from Radio Man Shin, um, he's he's actually one of like our, our regulars here. He he does a lot of Hello. writing. He does a lot of writing in a sense. Um, so out of curiosity, he asks in your world building and players, how do you treat players that break the mold per se, like having certain characters that feel like they kind of stick out more from this world for some reason. For example, mm -hmm. for Finn to understand a bit is. Wait, for Vin to understand a bit is Ezekiel in India. Oh, okay, okay. So, um, I personally, when I world build, I like very local stories. Very, mm -hmm. not very epic. No, no epic level stuff. Not nothing too mm -hmm. out of the ordinary. It's I like small stories. So, mm -hmm. when Shin he yeah, brought his character in, go on the same way plan. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Shin, when Shin brought in his character, it was it was a you, you, there's space for it to become an epic level character. Mm -hmm. But in my world, it's like very very gray very not 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 too epic like it's like looking at i guess the witcher and then looking at dragon age okay Ground you know <laughs> yeah so like i guess like what's for you like when it comes to like role building and like you know bringing in these kind of like characters how, how does that work for you um personally uh i'll go into uh, more of a personal note for this um personally like uh, of course, like tone is very important in, uh, in how you enjoy a game. You do not want uh, you do not want an anime uh, magical girl that only casts fireball in mm. Curse of Stride. Yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> uh, of course, tone is very important. Of course, I mean, I, I would love to have that kind of character in uh, in, a, in 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 an anime inspired game, like where wacky shit happens. Right? That that's that's totally legit. Uh, but in Crystal Strat now, you, you, you need to be more grounded and more gritty. And I am still looking for my lost mother who is, who's, <laughs> who the Vistani is captured, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And all those like dark edgy gothic stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. Tone is very important, of course. And you have to do, you have to discuss that in, in your session zero. And, and 
so so that when you build your world, it's consistent to how the players are experiencing it. Otherwise, it will of course be a detrimental to the other players' experience who who is coming to here to have a swashbuckling adventure, but they're they're meeting, um, as I said, like like you said, Witcher. You cannot have a swashbuckling adventure in the Witcher world. Mm-hmm. You can have it in a different tone, but it will be very hard. Like if you were trying to experience the Witcher, you want it to be down and gritty, where people are cruel to each other. There's a lot of moral gray areas. So your characters have to reflect that as well. So when we go to players who break the mold, I think what the only limitation would be that tone. Mm-hmm. Aside from that, the the key uh, the key issue is that you need to have a character that can be compelling to uh, to the world, that and that that works. Uh, for example, if we want to have a happy go lucky character in the world like Witcher, Dandelion is yeah. a happy go lucky character. Yeah, yeah. You know, he, he definitely breaks the mold of everybody else you meet uh, in the world. <laughs> I mean, uh, and and that works. Why does it works? Because it still reflects the tone. Down the line, it's, it's just this bard who's trying to, uh, to have fun and, 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 and drink and make some money and meet some girls and, uh, and enjoy his life. And Every bard in just, D&D ever. <laughs> uh, they're getting me started on this emo bar that I have in one of my campaigns. Uh, there's oh, no. Story to it. <laughs> yeah, uh, so, so it's, as long as the, t- the tone matches... Dandelion still feels like a real person in that world because mm. he is still making opportunity out of the moral gray areas to, you know, seduce countesses and 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 uh, and basically make money out of like Geralt's adventures by uh, by by uh, how do I put it? <laughs> um, colorizing, I put yeah. it in those color <laughs> stories uh, and, and rock ballads. Uh, so. As long as you, you, you're, you're careful of the tone and your player and your, your DM, uh, you, of course, you have a conversation about keeping that tone, everything goes, I guess. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I, I think the, 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 that's the important part, the conversation that you have to have with your, character, your players, and it works. No? Yeah. That, that... Otherwise, yeah, the magic fireball stuff is going to ruin your games. Yeah, and like, like, there's also like a certain level of like, Especially if you're jumping into, like, let's say something original, like an original IP, mm-hmm. quote unquote, for um, your world and the homebrews, et cetera, et cetera. Like, there, there's an avatar that's coming out. So, yes. we can, uh, we can do... <laughs> yeah. that'll be amazing. But, like, it, oh you God. know, there's a certain level, as in, for in, my, in my opinion, like, like, it, like, going on that tangent, you're talking about the like, communication that the your player and the DM is supposed to have, like, you're supposed to respect at least a little bit more when it comes to the world building because it's the DM who's bringing, who's helping everyone bring everything to life, you know? Mm-hmm. So there needs to be like a little bit of certain respect. You can play your outlandish characters here and there, but, you know, do your best to be accommodating to yeah, <laughs> whatever the world building uh, levels respect are. Respect is the most important uh, social contract you need to have between everybody at the table. Mm. Uh the lack of respect is why we have a Reddit called RPT Horror Stories. <laughs> that is true. That is very, very true. Yeah. Uh, and, um, <laughs> yes, just kidding. <laughs> uh, just kidding. That's true. Um, uh, sorry, I, I was a fan of the, uh, this. Uh, Wolf just mentioned about how Dylan's real name is. And it's true. It's true. Uh, I, I keep forgetting that because uh, I, I am a fan of the game. And then I switch the books and then I watch the series. So, but Dan Lyons is stuck in my head. Uh, yeah, his name is Jess Gabe, that's true. <laughs> yeah, uh, back to what we were discussing. Um, I think that uh, how, when we go back to how people uh, play uh, uh, their games, in, 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 uh, we, we talk about IP, but every DM who creates their own world, this is, that is their intellectual property. That is their child. That is their little baby. Yeah, that, that's, I mean, I, I uh, in my my homebrew campaign, which is still set in the Forgotten Realms, but I created this little uh, group of islands just off the uh, Sword Coast, uh, a little bit above uh, Chult, and uh, and and uh, that little group of island, I I call it the 
the the Jade Islands. I, I, I that was my first game anyway. So, <laughs> uh, and and the bet says still that that little group of island is my little baby. I I have so much love and care put into that world. Mm. Uh, so yeah, it's true that uh, there there should be respect by players to what the DM is trying to build. Uh, but there's also uh, there's also there's there's also the the responsibility of a DM to make the game enjoyable mm -hmm. to what the players are expecting. That's, which is why session zero and communication is very important. Uh, otherwise, yeah, we have the we have the magical girl in the uh, uh, curse of Strahd <laughs> situation again. And 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 and, and man, we we spend four hours a week to enjoy a game. We don't want to you know argue at the table, right? Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, talk ahead, have a session zero, really be firm and like, okay, this is the world I built. This is how the world will interact. And your, your character, I do feel that this is going to be an issue. You might need to fix these little stuff. Can you help me? And, and that is a really uh, important conversation. You have to like, you cannot go, go and tell people like, Okay, this is my world. You have to do this, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to like you. You do. Uh, one, one of my go-to words is like, "Hey, man. Um, I think your character. It's really cool. Uh, but it, it, there's a little bit of a tonal, uh, tonal, um, uh, tonal issue in how we're playing in the world. So, can you fix these for me as a favor? And and most of the time, it works. A lot of the a lot of my players, of course. Uh, don't get an asshole, asshole into your group, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the players a lot of, who want to enjoy their game say, oh, yeah, thanks. Uh, I'll, I'll fix it in the next game. And they, they adjust. And, uh, and, and it, it turned, it, uh, for the past 3.5 years uh, since in my campaign, um, my players have been wildly different in their origins, but they have become accommodated to the world. And that's, I think that's the, the respect that you mentioned, like how players should respect the world that the DM has built and the DM should respect what the player expect out of, out of their four hours of gaming, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's also important for the DM to have fun at the table too. Yeah. So. Um, before we jump to the last question, I kind of want to mm -hmm. transition from what, what, what you're saying um, mm -hmm. to, I guess, something adjacent. Um, I'm curious. So... Moonsoon is this grand scheme project with 30 plus people mm -hmm. like contributing to it. And there's me. I'm I'm small scale in my world building. I'm super small scale. Like in my world building, you know, it literally starts with one street, right? <laughs> um, I don't draw a map, it starts from one street. And to take it even further, don't tell my players this. I know some of them are in chat right now, but like <laughs> like sometimes my world building world building starts from character mm -hmm. creation. <laughs> when they something when they say something that I don't have, <laughs> I'm gonna bring it to life. In the, the, mm. the, the DM screen is there for that purpose. <laughs> you can just like, uh-huh, uh-huh, but your right hand is right writing furiously on your notes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um so my my question is, was there any kind of moment when it comes to like working with so many people with world building where that small scale feeling like where it's back at your table back you know 20 years ago for your yeah. dm in a sense like did any of it get lost along the way or did it just get like m like amplified in a sense i it's that's really hard to say because like uh for john especially uh for uh for us as well uh uh i mean john for for this world is, is this is his little baby we are basically you know adding more spice as we go forward mm -hmm. uh and and I, I think there are stuff that we we've we have evolved out of. Uh, I mean, he showed me the map uh, twenty years ago, which is this little uh, on this little piece of note. He still has it, uh, and and it's definitely different. That's for sure, mm -hmm. right? I mean, twenty years ago, how you play D and D itself is different. Oh, yeah, so definitely. things have definitely changed. And 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 since we started working on it, um, a lot of a lot of uh, the reason why we have contributors from all, all over the world is to have a fresh perspective and and of course we 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 don't necessarily shift from what we're trying to create the essence has to be there the essence of moonstone is about uh a character in this ancient world filled with lost history and magic 
and they're having this Indiana Jones uh, uh, adventure, but without the white savior part. You are basically a local, and you're taking control of your homeland again. You're trying to discover all these past ages world where with ancient dungeons and and moons that have gods that can descend upon the world at any time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and the that that sense of um i would call it wanderlust uh has that cannot be lost in what we try to create and that that is something we keep, we try to keep no matter how big the project has gotten uh mm-hmm. in the past year uh and and aside from that if something is really cool and adds to the game as well as like uh doesn't shift your uh shift your what you're trying to create there's nothing wrong in adding to your world and this is how i think we've been uh working on so far we research a lot uh especially uh this that's my main role in the team is to uh basically open a history book uh talk to people interview to check if the laurel lore is not uh not disrespectful one uh mm-hmm. second is true to what it's trying to say uh like yeah you don't want uh, a guardian deity to be turned into uh something like a vampire in our world that that's disrespectful that's something that cannot happen so we have to get the core of what lower element we want to go into we mm-hmm. get those elements and then we get the moonstone twist and then we send out to our contributors who basically give it a, a, a more, uh, add on to it and once it come back we have a really cool uh, design element that is unique to our world. And but at the same time, when you look at it, you recognize it. As a Neymar, as a Burmese guy, I, I look at some of the things we created uh, out of it, and I just like, yeah, this is something I definitely have read in one of my fairy tales. But it's, def- it's not. It's totally new. Oh, that's amazing. So, yeah, I, th- I think that is the most important part uh, of like evolution of content. You you have to keep the core, but you can add on to it to make it the most weirdest thing uh, in the world. That, that is a perfect setup for Seth's question, actually. So he's asking, how do you mm-hmm. feel when someone bases their world on historical events? Ooh. For him, he is based on the landmass of Westlands that is based on the 30-year mm-hmm. war. Mm-hmm. So I guess... Okay. I, there, there's certain parts you can pull from that, I guess. Like from what you just mentioned earlier. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, uh, we pull uh, in Munson. You can actually find uh, uh, Neymar had to go through a colonial period of uh, uh, nearly, I think, seventy. Uh, it started from eighty eighty five to uh, nineteen forty eight. So nearly uh, seventy years of uh, of uh, colonial colonialism uh, mm-hmm. under British rule. And I believe a lot of our South, Southeast Asian countries had to go through that as well. And, uh, and you can definitely see elements in there where, it, and especially in our campaign, where uh, how we, we, don't, we, we don't want to show uh, uh, colonialism is bad. Mm-hmm. The, pe- uh, the people who are living in the world right now, they don't know. It was a system that was bad. And I think this is, this is like a, an issue. Uh, this is the reason behind a lot of the things going on in the world right now. Um, it's not the people who are living in that country that's bad. It's the system and the people who are in power that is promoting the system that is bad most of the time. And, and we have to, we cannot hide that. We should not hide that because we have to learn from these mistakes. Mm-hmm. And that is very important. And in all these, like, for example, like the Thirty Year War. Uh, correct me on my history lesson. The, uh, I, I'm, just, I'm just gonna do a quick Google to make sure I'm uh, uh, on what, what what you mean by Thirty Year War, because this, uh, okay, Thirty Year War or oh, okay about the Holy Roman Empire back in uh, it's 18. Okay, so uh, so okay, I'm not that far off in my uh, assumption. So. So all these kind of like uh, political movement and and and, and racial uh, uh, issues, we have experienced. We have we are still facing it these days, mm-hmm. and we should not be hiding from it. But we are. We should be learning from it. At the game, what we try to the games or the entertainment medium that we're trying to create out of it, it needs to show that. 
And that that is very that is that is that is easy to say, but very hard, difficult to do. Yeah, um, <laughs> it, it it takes a lot of work, and it takes a lot of careful uh, um, edits and read up to make sure that you're 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 pulling the facts and and the lessons uh, respectfully, but at the same time, you're not hiding the dark deeds that we had to go through. I mean, we wouldn't be here if we went for those mistakes. We know that those are some mistakes, and we try to fix those mistakes. That's why this is where we are now. Mm. Uh, like, the, and and I think that's important. And from from what Seth uh, Seth has mentioned, uh, it's important to have that element in there, and it's but it's also more important to draw the right lessons in the story to tell. Yeah, that's. <laughs> Because now, 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 like all of a sudden, I'm going through every like historical base event I've ever kind of like transitioned into my world. That, oh yeah, yeah, that is. Uh... <laughs> I mean, what are humans, right? We we tell stories based on our experience. This is how yeah. we tell stories, and and we have to test them. Otherwise, it would be boring. Like otherwise, it would it would not be real. It would not be authentic. Because of this, like this point that we're in, I'm actually I'm going to save onto this question. I have a not a question. Like I have a topic that I want to kind of dive into. But I'll bring that mm-hmm. on later on because I feel like it'll be a little bit uh, deep of a question. Mm-hmm. So let's kind of dive into sets before we get there. Let's make let's make a journey. So mm-hmm. um, <laughs> Seth is asking about uh, fantastical racism, for instance. Mm-hmm. No tiefling in this bar. What are your opinions on that? Um, uh, how like, do I put it? It, it? Again, depends on the setting and depends on the story you're trying to tell. Uh, yes, uh, I, I, in my homebrew world, not homebrew world, it's in the Forgotten Realm, so the lore itself is there that how Tiflings are considered to be, you know, sidelined of mm-hmm. a race. Um, there's a lot of discrimination, there's a lot of, like, prejudice against them. And, um, again, uh, the, the issue is not that you have that element in the story. The issue is that when you're not respectful, uh, in telling that story, one of the one, uh, I have this RPG horror uh, horror story with one, one, one with my one time play on Roll Twenty, and um, I'm not sure. Actually, I think I see one of my friend wrote uh, wrote about it on on RPG horror stories as well. It was a one time we were playing at this. Um, we're playing. We were playing. A, we started out a campaign, and and the DM was. Uh, has of course like again it's very similar to what uh, Seth has mentioned that Tiflin does not allow dwarves, elves, and other any other um, meta non-human races. Mm. Uh, and 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 for us, we he was really harsh with the racism like uh, mark. Like it's not just like oh uh, you're not allowed to sleep in here, leave. No, it was full on. Uh, narrative control would arrest. We do not get even get to roll the dice to fight back. The NPCs who try to arrest us were, I think, way too over level because they have a twenty AC and we were playing double. Two, we were playing at level two. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, and and then they he uh, the DM um, kind of berated us for not being careful in this kind of country because this is how the world is, and he's trying to be realistic. And that is where the problem is. D and D or any other game or any other experience, you're, you 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 should not be glorifying this. Mm-hmm. Yes, you need to have it in there, and 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 it has to be portrayed as as what it is. And and you can, and and it's bad. That's it. That that's the most simple as way to put it. You have to call it call this um, call racism bad because we know the racism is bad. Racism is not. Uh, contributing to our, how our humanity is involved, how our society is involved, right? Uh, yeah. And it's detrimental for us to take the next step. So, yeah, and, and, and it's important for a DM, a storyteller, to be aware of that, mm-hmm. to be able to like, okay, I want to put in a political element and I want to make this realistic as possible. But my players are here to enjoy a game. They're not here to, you know, go through torture. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So, uh, so you need to remember that there has to be a fun aspect to what you're trying to do. That's one. Second is that you need to be a, your story, the story you're telling, uh, 
uh, has to be able to extract uh, a lesson that is correct. And there's a, uh, the objective truth of racism is that racism is bad. So mm -hmm. your story should reflect that. And uh, yeah, so, so for like fantasy racism, the story naturally evolved towards uh, the players leading a revolt against uh, this tyrannical kingdom. That's how it, that's how it should be portrayed. Mm -hmm. and, so it's more of a question of responsibility then. Yeah, than anything that's else. it. That's it. Okay. Um, moving on to, I guess, Shin's question. How do you feel when someone takes your world, with consent ho uh, hopefully, takes your world and adds his own sort of flair in it? Might break certain settings in it, but all in all makes this exquisite bit of storytelling in your world. Mm. You can say that's like basically taking Monsoon making their own homebrew of Monsoon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, okay, um, that is one. I have never experienced that, so uh, take this with a grain of salt. <laughs> But I, I, I read uh, a little excerpt in a uh, in book about Aberon by Wizard. Of course, I mean, Wizard, Wizard no matter how, how we like, like we, we do love the game. So, and, 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 and how it's written in Aberon is that the story uh, that you DM tell is your story. The world that we have created for you is something for you to have as guidelines. And, and, and it's your to, to shift it. I don't remember the, I'm paraphrasing here. You are free to shift the world and add element as you like in your game. Mm -hmm. And and for me, uh, I, especially I, I was watching uh, 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 the stream, uh, the, 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 uh, the charity stream by uh, 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 friends uh, 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 back in uh, like two, I think that was, it was around five days ago or two days ago. Uh, uh, they basically uh, combined uh, I Love Cena Una and Monsoons uh, uh, into, uh, into, into, into one game. Oh, okay. And it's beautiful to watch because like, I love I was a Cinehood, right? <laughs> yeah. And Moons, our, our adventure, The Trail of Madness, which you can actually download right now by registering at our website with your email, uh, is, uh, is, it has a lot of element of our world. Uh, and the combining them together and seeing it evolve into a game that is enjoyed by other people, that is something that I, I, I love to see. Uh, and I, I felt very humbled at the same time, uh, overjoyed by watching that stream. Uh, and, and I think this will be the same for, uh, for us when Moonstone actually get published as well. And a lot of the creators, world, world creators, uh, who, who seek to publish their adventures or who seek to publish their settings, wants other players or dungeon masters to, to, to expand it. And, and, and there's so much that your one mind can imagine. The reason why we have over 30 contributors to our world is because we want so much, so much, uh, we want so much more imagination to come into our world, not just a, a, single, uh, uh, a single perspective that we have at our table. We want people who have never seen Myanmar, okay, like, what do they feel? What do they see? Or people who have lived through Myanmar and like, okay, this is their, perspective from their social backgrounds and this adds an element of authenticity to what mm -hmm. you create and and this is what is going to happen uh as we move forward when people publish their settings as well i think and and, and, and i think that is just like we said about we talked about mythologies right they have to evolve and i want to see that evolve as well i want to see how people uh will take a moon soon take the 12 azuras uh with their various elements and and then turn them into uh gods that descend upon the world which we never written in our books and uh, they can create that or they can create adventures that adventures where players uh, ascend to the moons and explore the world we haven't we haven't actually mm. broken down yet and and that would be so cool for us to see like oh and just like the dm situation where uh when your player talks about really cool things and you just take few notes furiously yeah. be like Okay, that's really cool. <laughs> I mean, you can, you can also throw it to a different side of it, where it's like, it's basically the same mm -hmm. um, word process that you guys are doing right now, where it's like, there's the initial research, mm -hmm. and then it, it gets thrown to someone, you know, outside, like writing in, adding their own elements. And it's basically the same thing, is that instead of, mm -hmm. you know, doing the writing portion of it, you're doing the playing portion of it. <laughs> yeah. 
uh, that is, I guess you could say that's subjective, which is more fun playing it or writing about it. Playing but it is definitely more fun. <laughs> as, definitely more fun. as someone who loves to world build but not write, I can definitely say that playing it is a lot more fun as well. Uh, give me mm. some. Uh, yeah, yeah, go for it. Go for it. I'm hearing an alarm. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, okay, it's off. Okay. okay. Yes, uh, just check, check, make it short. Uh, we, we're we're a little bit uh, you know scary these days because like there's a ton of conflict like, going on in the country as well. Mm. So we're just being careful with any sound we hear these days. Yeah, but, uh, but yeah, uh, I think I think uh, I mean when you mentioned about like uh, hate, hating to write, it, it hits to, it hits me to the core as well. Uh, oh, thank yeah. you, God, I'm not alone. <laughs> I, I, uh, I, how do I put it? I can improv a world building session, mm-hmm. and I would love to do it all the time and mm-hmm. record it, and then try to write about it the day after maybe. But it's so much effort to like. Uh, sit down and write them, which is why I'm not a writer in this uh, in this project. Uh, man. Yeah. Like, I, I, okay, I'm going to save the deep questions for later because this is going to be fun. So, <laughs> there, there, there's this thing about world building and DMing. It's it's, it's so nice because, so, there are elements to world building and DMing that are basically their own things. For instance, world building yeah. does entail writing, but it doesn't yeah. mean that you're a good writer or you want to write. Same thing with DMing. Yeah. You're meant to tell a story but you're also you can also just be a storyteller. You don't have to be a DM. Yeah, <laughs> you, you you don't you don't you can you can basically and then that's when we say like yeah be a, be a write then then don't play with D and D write a story. Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. So you can you can definitely do that. Uh, you, being a, it's not just about storytelling. Uh, I think for TM you have to entertain as well. That's mm-hmm. the most important part. Mm-hmm. Uh, world building is how do I put it? It's self gratification. It's something that you <laughs> love. The players probably would not enjoy you going into a thirty minute long exposition. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, I, I've, I've come across a lot of like um, world builders who really they go, they go all out, right? They're not, they're writing like, oh yeah. Like, there are DM practices. Like, if you, if you're not planning to publish, right? There are DM, DM, DM practices where do not write if it's not relevant. Please, yeah, yeah. don't do it. Master. That's true. For a dungeon master. If you're not publishing your game, if you're not publishing your game. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, uh, that, that is one of the big, uh, how to, okay. One of the uh, uh, best example I've heard from, I, I think it was Brandon uh, from Dimension 20 who mentioned this, is that when a player asks, oh, that's a statue of a god. What god is it? You can just say that is uh, that's probably the statue of the goddess of love, uh, Ashtu, and uh, and 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 you see uh, uh, you see a bit of moss going on it, and says it hasn't been worshipped for years. That's it. That is the only <laughs> element you have to world build at the moment. Even if you haven't written anything about the love goddess Ashtu or such, that is the only thing you have to do as a DM. <laughs> you don't have to go into. Okay, so you see. The Avatar of Love, <laughs> and they have these holy scripture, and they have the order of uh, Astu, who who are people who, uh, uh, and they have a holiday, uh, five holidays throughout the year, and they gather here in the middle of winter, in the middle of, uh, in, 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 the, in, in the 12th hour of the night. But you don't have to go into a 20 minute rant about it. <laughs> you don't have to write about it either. Because players, players are not going to engage until they are go- engaging. Like, they're, like, that's literally it. They're not gonna, like, oh, yeah, that's cool, man. Like, yeah. yeah. Um, like, we're gonna go use, that way now. Use your infamous bathroom, bro- bathroom break, quote unquote. Yes. Do you worry about yes. things like if your players go off the, <laughs> off the rails, in a sense, or they fuck over your story? Know. Yeah, man. I mean, I, mean, I mean, when there's something like holy, holy new, uh, I mean, uh, that is the most important thing I learned from uh, Mad Mercer and also from, uh, from uh, John. Who is my uh, first DM? And uh, uh, is that notes? Like, have a notepad ready, just there, so that you will have to make shit up as you go. And and sometimes you get the luxury of a bathroom break. Sometimes you don't get it. <laughs> uh, so you're just like, yeah, who is this guy? And everything has been like Ash to Zig Mix Zelnor, and then you have like. This guy is called Carl. Carl. <laughs> like, <laughs> I always say Greg, 
I don't know why. <laughs> it makes it so hard in fantasy worlds. <laughs> yeah, and, and and um and and you just have to like say a little bit of element to it so that the players have something to go go, go forward. And if, if the players are interested, they will ask. They will ask. Don't worry. Mm. Uh, if they want to, like, oh yeah, we're gonna I me. Mean, in a, you probably written a mystery game, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. In, in, a, in a murder murder mystery, you have three clues, but players always go uh, discover a fourth clue that you have never prepared. <laughs> if they will spend over one hour and a half, just okay. What does this look like? What? How warm is it? How cold is it? Uh, how wet is it? And like they're like, yeah, it's 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 just a statue and nothing important. And they're like, huh. It doesn't seem like it's important. <laughs> and they go on a full on tangent for that as well. And yeah, then you take the infamous bathroom break and like, okay, how do I shift my clues around so that that make that statue is now relevant? Uh, the DM is not making is not making the web. They're connecting the web. <laughs> There's a difference. I, I, I think I think uh, um, I, I I'm still a, a newbie uh, a newbie DM compared to like a lot of these veterans who were in the stream probably mm. and uh, were in the chat probably so. Uh, uh, but I do feel that the work of a DM is the, actually one of the responsibilities of the, of the DM is to basically make shit up as it goes. This <laughs> yeah. is why we're there. Right? <laughs> Otherwise, people would just play a video game. True, very true. Right? I mean, <laughs> you can get a game that is 100 hours long for $60 or $70 now because of PS5, but yeah, yep. $60 and you, you get a professionally written game. <laughs> but but there's a human element that the DM provides that is improvising that is uh that is that is definitely not prepared and th this is where the DM shine this is the responsibility of the DM to just make shit up as it goes mm -hmm. and remember that yeah and always have a Carl or or a list of uh a uh, Carl and Greg in your random <laughs> NPC profile. <laughs> Oh, the amount, I, I can, there, there's so many alternate universe Gregs out there in my games. Just saying. I can you know pull what? so many guards. <laughs> once you, once you, once you have like, like five different games and then you have like these so many Gregs on different universes. And then there's six campaign where actually the Greg is like this interdimensional traveler <laughs> who, is, who has experienced all these new oh, adventures. No. And he finally brings them together. <laughs> Or to fight among the universe uh, for the fate of the universe now. Like, okay, that, that can work, you know? <laughs> but, and that's how DMs do. Like, you just make shit up as it goes. And, and as long as your players are having fun. And I, I think that's the most important. I, and one of the, uh, I think the core message I, I would love to give to like any new DMs out there is like, be confident in the shit you made up. Don't be like, oh yeah, I think that's it. No, just say, yeah, that's it. Pull a poker face, just stay there. And the, and the, and the players are like, yeah, all right. And they will go. Just write down what you what, what you created so that they, you remember it next time. But otherwise, that's okay. Players can sense fear. <laughs> yeah. Like, Poker face, very important. Definitely. Players can definitely sense fear. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I mean ho hopefully my, my friends are not in the stream as well. They, they probably be like, huh, so all those times you said about all these really cool stuff that we said, are those improvised stuff? Like, I always say that. Oh yeah, I mean, I mean, I may mean, have thought about it. You know, you never know. That's that, That's the thing. Like, you never know. I think there's one person in chat that does recognize you because they came in saying, "Oh my god." Um, oh, oh my god. <laughs> uh, yeah. I think I think I think that's my friend. Yeah, <laughs> he's one of my. Uh, uh oh oh okay. Uh, I I I think I think that's Kevin Line. Uh, oh. Who, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I, I, have, I don't remember this. Uh, I don't remember his name, but hopefully this is Kevin Lai. Please say if you are, uh, <laughs> who is one of our core team members uh, who drew. Oh, that's Tommy. Okay, Tommy is one of my players at my table. He plays a cleric, uh, who a dwarf cleric who has been, who has a drinking problem and is now going for the one less hurrah in saving the island. So yeah, welcome, Tommy. <laughs> Thanks for showing up, man. <laughs> Um, damn, let's go 200 wolf. But, um, I think, more games by then. yeah, I wanted to pull on that from Shin really quick. So, um, looking at Monsoon, you have a new inspiration system. Did mm -hmm. any of those board games behind you really like help you dive into mechanics? I know it's a little okay. bit off world building, but I think it, it kind of still fits. 
<laughs> I'm gonna be 100% honest here. First, mm -hmm. uh, not all these board games are mine. I I have I have been I have been blessed with great fortune recently. Uh, when a few friend friends of mine left the country uh, because of the whole situation, mm -hmm. uh, they left a lot of board games for me, and I've been playing through them. Oh <laughs> not all of them are mine, but some of them are, are indeed mine. And yes, uh, just like you asked that, uh, um, we've we've uh we went through uh we went through in creating uh how do i put it you know what actually a lot of things that we create are something that we have experienced before and and for us uh board games or ttrpgs or any other video games is something that we draw elements out of it and then we make uh, something cool mm -hmm. and uh, evolution yeah yeah that's it with, with, with our deck uh i do uh i do find that deck building games are really cool and from there, we, we, we uh, and also I, 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 I'm fascinated by tarot readings. Mm. And uh, right. we actually have a Burmese version of tarot. Ooh, uh, a Burmese version of tarot ourselves as well. And, and, and we're fascinated by that. And, and then I play Curse of Strahd. Uh, oh, with, yeah. Uh, with, 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 with all this tarot system, which is like, it will be so cool have a deck of cards that you can hand out to players and we didn't know what was going to be right and then uh and for us we have the moons uh which is the 12 moons of uh, uh of uh, monsoon uh are basically the creation uh, myth of this world uh we have the moon of yarrow which is essence to all the way to gilgar the moon of discord uh and and uh the the idea behind it is that we want to help uh players uh role play uh like when i started role playing i don't know where to start right i don't know uh how my character alignment works i i'm i'm, I'm new to this but give me a sec my my uh computers is uh uh going low on battery i'm just gonna quickly grab my plug yeah go for give it give me a sec uh let me uh i'll be back uh just, yeah. it's it's a red alert now so i have to move yeah no worries no worries in the meantime chat how are you guys doing i hope you guys are doing well and today. having fun <laughs> and having fun obviously but um yeah i hope you, i hope you guys are, have been enjoying the new version of inner monologue where it's more conversation heavy than before i know the previous one is like it's a conversation disguised as a podcast this one's a conversation 100 <laughs> percent but yeah <laughs> Yeah, um, uh, I'm back. <laughs> it's definitely yeah. This this is definitely really cool to nerd out with you, uh, especially with a glass of whiskey. So hey, I'm already like, I'm already halfway I, down my mojito, so I'm I'm with you there. <laughs> I I haven't been to a bar in such a long time thanks to COVID. So this is this is a this great is feeling. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, uh, back to what I was saying about the moons in the world, right? And and then when we uh, when when I first started role playing, I uh, I mean. Like most players these days, you watch Critical Role, you watch High Rollers, and all these you know cool D&D streams. And the, these guys are professional voice actors. Yes, they're enjoying the nerd life and everything, but still, they're professional voice actors. They know how dramatic writing works. You don't. Mm. So uh, I, I, I really, uh, I, I, I went through uh, quite some time. Like, how do I find an arc? How do I find a way to uh, you know bring out uh, my characters' uh, quirks? And of course, 5 e have the background system, which is really good already. And then uh, we wanted to add to it because um, for inspiration, uh, for inspiration uh, in 5 e you normally get it when you role play well for your character or your flaws. And, and it's, it's definitely based on the DM. But when you're in the middle of a fight or with CR5, uh, CR5 monsters and Six players oh, with three casters uh, who has a fireball and magic missiles up, and then then they, some one of them uh, says, "Oh yeah, I'm gonna throw up sleep storm," and you, yeah, in the middle of all that, you you're not gonna remember to like reward uh, inspiration. So mm -hmm. the moon deck is meant for that. Like we want players, to, we want one to take the load off of the DM, so that mm -hmm. uh, so that you don't have to think about the inspiration part anymore. Um, at the start of a session or the start of a day, you uh, you draw cards from the deck, Ooh. and and the moons. Uh, there's an in-world lore what what uh, is that the moons influence how your character, how you feel, 
Mm. The moons uh, influence the world around you. Uh, for example, the moon of Uzgard, the moon of consumption, is a fiery moon. Uh, and 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 under Uzgard, you feel the drive to uh, to 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 conquest, to 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 achieve something. You need to have that feeling. And, mm. and, 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 and that's the, what the roleplay prompt is about. So when you get a card, uh, it normally has a, a major roleplay prompt and a minor roleplay prompt. So I'm not going to go into the crunch of it, but the idea is that when you do one of the, role, uh, the prompts, you get a direct benefit to it. Uh, for example, for the minor roleplay prompt, you can get something like, okay, you get a, uh, you get a, uh, you get a uh, extra fire damage on your next attack. Or uh, on a major roleplay prompt, which is like something you have to do with character. You have to, uh, you have to sit down and 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 uh, and watch at something uh, rot for over an hour. Mm. Uh, if you want to get a roleplay prompt uh, from uh, from the moon of uh, Yarrow, which is the uh, which is the moon of uh, Vegeto. Uh So you do that, and then you are immune to necrotic damage for the next twenty four hours. So you're not you don't just get advantage anymore. You actually get buffs. Yeah, it's like asking for blessings. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and, and lastly, it's it, uh, for for uh, one of the cool feeling I really like is that uh, I don't have to remember about the inspiration system anymore. My players are gonna be like, "Hey, uh, Jack, I did this already, so uh, I'm gonna get this buff." But yeah, remember, it, market that's your that's your stuff, and uh, and we can continue playing. But you get the reward of it. You get to role play. The players are also like. Uh, feels like okay. I have to do this as a character who's in role playing. So you have a prompt, and you get to do it. And it's a little good practice for you to improvise on the spot. And that's that's I I feel like is how you get players to role play. And it would have helped me so much when I started out. So yeah, this is this is the inspiration, the idea behind the moon uh, the moon deck, and the lore behind it as well. And hopefully we hope uh, hopefully. Uh, a lot of DMs and players who get to experience Musum will enjoy it. Mm. I mean, that's that's def- like it, personally like that is a more definitely definitely more. Um, wait, may, may, uh, let me rephrase. So there's this very famous way of um, playing games nowadays. For instance, Last mm-hmm. of Us. There is no more menu. Oh there God. is no more map oh, screen, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And that idea where inspiration is just part of the game. It is just mm-hmm. getting that blessing. That is, I don't know, maybe I haven't done enough, enough research on Reddit, but that is a very novel idea and I love it. <laughs> like, yeah. it's making me, like, it's sparking my brain for, like, future stuff as well. I'm like, ooh, that's... Oh, yeah. I mean, so there are so many other systems that, 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 that takes the, um, that adds a unique element to it. Like, I, 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 am, I am very much in love with Power by the Apocalypse mm-hmm. systems, like Monster of the Week with their luck system, where... Uh, the, the the keeper gets to pull less and less punches as you spend your luck. Mm-hmm. It gets more terrifying, more scary, and it gets more creepy. And at some point, the, the DM gets to sick the monster on you without uh, any uh, hold back. And it's terrifying. When you are basically burned like six of your luck, you're like, holy shit, I'm going to die soon. <laughs> So, yeah. I, I, so and there are so many innovative systems nowadays. Uh, I, I, uh, and and I think it's important for uh, not just C and D, like everything, to be keep evolving. And mm. this is how we get to enjoy weird new stuff, right? <laughs> yeah. Um. Would you say that, like, for future, like for future world building, would it be nice to see more world building centric design, like when it comes when it comes to game design? Mm. Because like we we're seeing that in video games, but what about in tabletop RPGs? Um, um, like do you mean do you mean like by, by narrative or more like uh how like, logistic of the world? Uh, like just 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 in general, where the vibe feels more like you're still in the game, mm-hmm. you know, versus mm-hmm. um, immersive something. Yes, that's more immersive, definitely um, more immersive, like more immersive design, uh, mm-hmm. compared to what we've already been used to with tabletop RPGs, where mm-hmm. yes, there's your skills that translates to how smart you are. But like all the other things, where, where you know, like what well, you just said, like the inspiration system, like all the supplementary, the complementary mechanics, like mm-hmm. making them more immersive is definitely something that I personally haven't seen a lot. 
of. I mean, mm-hmm. there's some like growing sides of it, like there's City of Mist with their more actor director esque oh, yeah. kind of vibes, right? Yeah, true. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And there's I don't know is 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 would would saying fate kind of ride it in there a little bit? Not not so much. Like not so much actually. Fate is more like it's a it's a, a blank template. I'm, I'm, I'm not very familiar with fate, mm. but as a studio miss, I, I I definitely agree. Um, yeah. how do I put it? Okay, I, again, I come from a video game background, and I, I didn't read Lord of the Rings until I watched the movies when I was like, mm-hmm. uh, twelve or something. So, uh, I come from a, a very video game centric background, and th- there is a shift in immersion uh, nowadays. But but it all comes boiling down to uh, preference as well. Um, like TTRPG players seek an immersive experience, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, not just your, I mean, even for board games. Like there are people who really seek uh, immersive narrative driven board games, and there are people who just like to roll dice and play games. Mm-hmm. And and I, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's yeah. I mean, like Fortnite is one of the biggest gaming. Uh, in the world, and there's very little. I mean, there's a lot of world building, world building, <laughs> but still, you know, it's definitely not the immersive, greedy reality that uh, that we so much enjoy in Witcher, right? Mm. But but there's nothing wrong with people who enjoy that as well. So mm. it, well, first, it comes down to personal preference. That's uh, that's something I, w- I would say first. And next is like, uh, let's keep it small to D and D first, and um, and and TTRPGs and I think it's definitely a requirement mm-hmm. nowadays now. Uh, nowadays, because players are expecting more than just a hack and slash, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the people who enjoy D&D doesn't just, just want to... Uh, I'm not saying everybody is like this. Or there, will all, there will be players who like the hack and slash element of it and just want to roll multiple crits. Mm. They will... Uh, and, and, but... A lot of us seek D and D because we want to escape from into fantasy. We want to, to go live a world that is not possible in real life. We want to to visit distant lands and see dragons and and and, and go underwater for hours with a water breathing spell and and, and visit an enchanted underworld kingdom mm-hmm. and find a kraken there as well. Uh, maybe uh, maybe cut their head off, but yeah. So. We we want to do all of that, and and the idea of it is that like the the the, the cognitive mind behind us, right? The cognitive mind mind behind us who, who want this experience that we need to be immersed in it. We need to feel like this is something real. This is something that's coherent. And I think the, I think this is uh, this is important, and this is the shift that we are going towards. I mean, especially for Moonstone as well. We we've always considered like first of, like just, just like I said about the Moon deck, right? We can always put this in, in just a, as a oh as a deck of cards that, that do role play prompts, mm-hmm. but we feel like no, I mean yeah it's it's cool and all, but it's cooler if there's a reason behind it, if there's a in game element the player can embody behind it, and mm-hmm. you're immersive like 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 um a good example of a video game would be like M- M- Metro Exodus where you have maps. Uh, but that, it doesn't go with a you know with a HUD and say shows oh you have you're you're there right now and you're facing the direction it doesn't go there it, it basically make you put down your backpack open your map take a look and read it and like okay which way am I heading or dishonored like where mm. you have superpowers the fantasies but at the end of the day you're looking at a, uh, the first time I played Dishonor I was way over uh, I did not understand what was going on because I do not know how to read the maps. Mm-hmm. I was expecting to be there to be a, like a pointer, but there's none. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and and that is, and I was I was thrown off by it, but when I when I start playing it, it just adds the mystery to it. And I I, I think this is this is what we're uh, this is something that we're also seeing in TTRPGs. Uh, uh, of course, like thanks to uh, like really cool streams that are happening nowadays uh, nowadays as well, where. It's just not about killing monsters. It's about living a life in these worlds. Mm-hmm. And that is an, indeed an element that you have to consider when you're building the world. Or if you have a few players who just want to slay some goblins, you know, there's always that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, 
All right, I have a question. Do you want to go for a quick like five minute break? Do any bathroom things and whatnot, or do you want to keep on going till two hours? I I, I might need a refill. All right, all right. So let's go to a quick five minute break and uh, mm-hmm. chat. Hold on, we'll be back. Right. We'll be right back. Um.
that's the point. <laughs> this is the button, chat. Hi, chat. <laughs> we are back, guys. Um, welcome back, everyone. To all the people who just came in while we we're on break. Um, we are currently doing a segment of inner monologue with Jack from Moon Soon, and or to more more precisely say, Blue Bello Studios, with, the, with their product Moon Soon. And um, guys, we're talking about world building today. So uh, you know, sit back, relax. Everyone else here has been having a great time. I'm drinking. Jack's having a great time. We're gonna be here for uh, another good while, I guess you could say. So, um. When we were on break, you you were you, you said you you wanted to ask some questions. So before I dive, because there's a big tradition with inner monologue, I'll get to it later. But um, let's dive into whatever you wanted to ask before we kind of get too far away. Oh uh, yeah, uh, I what would you mention about like uh, uh, you you your your games are very grounded. Like you start small, it's more personal stories, right? Yeah, and, and uh, yeah, of course, Musun is uh, as a world is made this huge epic and such. But I, I also find it very fascinating how how great of a story you can tell in in a, in a small set in a very small setting. It doesn't have to like you know have a wall ending god coming in to destroy to destroy mm. everything, and, and it doesn't have to be that kind of epic game to for players to enjoy. And I I was I was fascinated by when you said like your game starts with just one street and like. How do you make that work? Oh, it's very simple. I have great players. You give me good lore. <laughs> well, no, okay. There's like there's, there's multiple mm. parts. Um, I I ever since so I've been doing D and D for the past. I want to say it should be six, seven months. Uh, seven months, seven years by now. <laughs> it, should be, oh, wow. it should be like seven years by now. And I think a lot of people in the community, like especially the more experienced DMs that are in the chat right now, for instance, like Seth, for instance, like Bubble Mancer, and um, I don't know who else in the chat who's like experienced, but like um, if they can quickly say that I I still have a lot of makings of a newbie DM, but I oh nowadays I always sell myself as a storyteller first because that's 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 what I'm good at, you know. Um, so I, I do my best to entertain. Yeah, see, thank you, Fobo. Thank you so much for the, the confidence boost. <laughs> but um, um, for the most part, I've always been a storyteller. That's that's always been my shtick. So nowadays, when I write stories, um, it's kind of sad where, where, where the idea comes from, where my the skill came from, is because I don't want to invest time. Oh, wow. <laughs> because I've been hurt many times from games ending abruptly, you know, and I'm one of those people that dives really deep into game, like lore. When I want to write lore, I'll write it. But now in a sense where he could say it's built on trauma, where I don't want to write too much anymore. Um, I, I, I've kind of like led to my, myself to a place where I've found myself comfy in just starting in that one street in that little town and slowly building out from there, like it, it, like maybe have a list of names that I like are like or, or aesthetics that I kind of want to push pull out pull from, but for the mo most part, it's 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 just vibing with what the players want for most of the time. Mm -hmm. um, I started off as a digital DM, so a lot of what I've done is I just looked at maps, made lore out of the maps that I looked at. <laughs> Uh, but nowadays, a really, great, a, really, a really good start. Uh, I gotta steal that. Okay, that's good. <laughs> I mean, digital DMs. You, you know, you know, a lot of people who enjoy D and D online, they're used to seeing maps, right? Mm -hmm. But now I'm, I've kind of reverted back to you know, theater of mind is cool. I don't want to look for a map and like constrict myself to that map, <laughs> you know. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, that, 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 I hope that kind of like answers your question about. No. That, 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 that does. <laughs> that does. Uh, it, it actually leads to more like because uh, uh, it, it, what you mentioned is very interesting about like the trauma of pe people leaving your game and, yeah. and it's just like ah, I put too much effort into this to be like just thrown away now. Uh, which is uh, I I I am uh, I I am very lucky. I, I cannot say uh, I can I, I can uh, I'm very lucky to have run at people for three and a half years now mm -hmm. and. Been going with a stable friend, a uh, stable group of friends, and, and and I think it's also because we started out as like in real world as friends, and we, we play together. 
a little bit of like people who come in and leave, of course, but the four, the core team has stayed the same for the past three and a half years. And I still haven't suffered the trauma that you have suffered so far. So I'm like, okay. <laughs> but yeah, I, 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 I've just, I was uh, having a conversation with one of my, uh, one of my friends who's also a dungeon master, uh, just before this, uh, just before this. And, and, um, he, he was mentioned, he just mentioned the same, same story. He's like, I don't, I don't, I don't want to run a long-term campaign like you, Jack, because I have, I have suffered from players who left the campaign that I've built so much upon. And like, Oh my god, that will be so sad. It's mm. true, uh, but but also I think there is a beauty in what you did as like just making uh uh making a world out of something you see and you, what your player says. Uh, I I was a DM who started out as a prep work DM. I wrote like fifteen pages of of like locations and NPCs for one game, like one mm. scenario, and. I mean, there will probably be three DMs who have like hundred pages for for one of their sessions, and will, will call me a noob right now. But you know, <laughs> uh, but 15, as a person who doesn't like to write, that is a lot. That is a lot. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I started out with that, and then and and of course as I move forward, I I I I'm, most of my games are now just two pages of, uh, with bullet points only. And uh, and, and there is a there's a beauty of finesse to what you did, and and. And this, and and I just want to like, how how do you uh, what what are your tell what are the telltale signs that you pick up from players on your world building? Like, w- how do you like seek into what the player is feeling uh, to to build your world? Because like for a digital DM, that is very difficult to do because in real life you see people at their faces, mm. and 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 I when I start doing digital, it's very difficult for me to pick up cues of what players are engaging to. And I just want to know how you do it. So um, a lot of it starts off with that I have small player groups. I am not a big fan mm-hmm. of more than three. Four, mm-hmm. depending on the balance of who your players are, is fine. Mm-hmm. But beyond four, I have given up on it. I've My first long campaign was 12 players. Never oh, again. Okay. <laughs> so you can understand where the trauma began. 12 players and they all dipped because life (laughs) so uh you started started out at the deep end (laughs) yeah i started at the deep end Mm -hmm. um shut up josh (laughs) but but like like like, that was like my i i I was literally in the deep end for a very very long time um so as a digital dm um being i guess being quote-unquote born and raised and being a digital dm i look at intent I look at what my players are asking and I build a story from there. Cause I already have a framework in my head of how a story should go. I mean, you have a lot of, um, how do you call this? Like tools, you know, you're like, you have Dan Harmon's like circle for writing and stuff like that. Right. Yeah, so, that's true. you know, you already have a lot of tools to kind of get where you need to go. And if you already have in your head, it's four hours. We have to find some kind of cl- conclusion. If there is no conclusion, I guess you got to set up for a s- sequel. Right. So it's, it's a lot of like just watching your players intent. Like, for instance, in, like, one of my recent games, I, it's hard to tell. I guess it's going to be a little bit difficult to tell context at the moment. But um, people in chat will understand that in a one-shot with, um, in my in my personal world in D&D, not Forgotten Realms, but it's homebrew, homebrew um, I had a very diverse cast. We had, like, a, a very scary kind of, like, Death Knight vibe guy. We had someone who's very survivalist kind of vibes. Uh, we have um, Ezekiel, that was what Shin was talking about earlier, very um, in tune with the warlock strengths, you know? <laughs> like, there is an outer deity, stuff like that. And there's, there's a happy-go-lucky character. And you kind of just pull on the intents of what everyone wants, you know? So a survival person kind of was coming in. Okay, I guess I'm going to stay in the woods for a little bit longer, you know, just to give him his, his spotlight. Um, Death Knight likes talking to dead people. Well... Surprise, surprise, I guess, include more dead talking. You know, it's just it's literally just understanding who your players are and just pulling on their intents mm-hmm. and building a story yeah. from there because you already have your idea if it's only four hours and you know what story needs to be told. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. One, of, one, of the, one of the little uh, things I discover as a DM is like, you, you can punch them in the gut. That's the idea. That, that's the idea behind uh, mm. having players, uh, looking at players' intent. And then if they find an NPC very lovely or if they find one NPC that's adorable, 
you build your world around that NPC a little bit more, and then at some point, you kidnap or you, you know, make them suffer a little bit so that like, the players are like, okay, we're kicking the big bad evil guy's ass now because they hurt our little PJ, okay? <laughs> we're gonna get him. Yeah. yeah uh, so I, I, I see where you're going from. Like, And, and also, uh, uh, Fobo has mentioned about like hundreds of, uh, three to four. I, I definitely agree with three to four in terms of like uh, how a game should be planned now. Otherwise it's too much. Sense. <laughs> I have six sentences. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's actually uh, a beauty. That, that's the beauty of finesse. <laughs> I love. I love how you're framing it as finesse. Thank you very much. I call it stupidity. <laughs> I, 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 as I mentioned before, I, I used. I, uh, I, I work in fashion as well in my day job. So mm. uh, it's my. It's, it's my way of saying I'm lazy. But into like beauty of finesse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. but definitely though I, I do find that 5e is uh 5e is uh really good in terms of like uh making coherent combat but at the same same time i i like when you mentioned about like making story elements out of a map uh because i have been in love with monster of the weeks uh and mm -hmm. mask uh, uh as a system these days and how every, this is my first experience of theater of the mind and and uh and I really wrote that much in uh, in both of these games, and it's it's a beautiful way to play too. And uh, uh, I, I think um, I think I think this is how uh, how different systems are made, and how world builders of these different systems can create uh, elements that the players engage in. And that, that is the that is the that is a main core. Uh, principle that the, uh, that a, a writer or world builder has to remember, not just like a DM. I mean, more like who who identify themselves as a world builder mm -hmm. has to remember is that you're building elements that player gets engaged. Mm -hmm. You 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 cannot forget that. Like sometimes we create stuff that players would never lift. Uh, players would never go and look, and they will go talk to a flower seller that you just wrote three lines about. <laughs> But they would never touch the NPC with a rich, dark backstory that you wrote for one uh, one full page. Yeah. So yeah, I I think the the the, the that's what you well, what you said is really beautiful in terms of like, um, look at what people engage in, which are what your players engage in, and then build from there instead of the building everything ahead. Uh, that that's that's actually a very uh, you, you call it stupid. I think that's a very smart way to de that to master. That's that's. That is def uh, definitely the definition of beauty of finesse. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah. Just to sideline a little bit to go to Gabby. Um, any advice you're reading your players? Um, it starts in session zero. Every DM will tell you that. Reading your players starts at session zero. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Just ask the right questions, and they'll, they'll give you what kind of player they are. If they're someone that oh, yeah. enjoys combat, you know right away they could be min-maxing if they want to, you know, just... You'll know right away if you just do a session zero. <laughs> yeah, you sit down and like, hey, yeah, uh, what do you, uh, okay, so um, one of the key questions I asked, like, what kind of game do you want to play, man? And that's, that's, that's when it starts. Like, people who want to role play, they'll be like, I have a backstory. And this I have a novel? I, <laughs> I have a novel. I have a novel. And there are people who just want to, like, do pop culture, uh, who's just like, okay, I want to play Spider-Man in this world. Yeah. Uh, and there are people who just like, okay. How do I do the most damage? And like, okay, yeah, you start from there. No, uh, and yeah, I, th I think uh, conversation is definitely very important, and 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 uh, communicating with your players from session zero to every game is important as well. Uh, one of the little things that uh, I do every at the end of every session is that I have a little debrief session where mm -hmm. I ask, "What's your favorite part?" and "What's your least favorite part?" That's it. Nothing super fancy, right? Mm -hmm. And and then you see, just like you said, like um, it was. I never found it that really fascinating before. Uh, I switched to digital DM because of uh, COVID. Uh, but when when I start, uh, when I, uh, but that that little two question can reveal so much about what your players find fascinating, and you don't even know before. Uh, I have a player who was really into role playing. I thought like. Oh, this NPC, this interaction with the this NPC would be her favorite spot, right? Mm -hmm. No, she enjoy um, dropping uh, huge uh, 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 
what's the, what was what was the spell? I don't remember. It was a, it was a, a force, a phantasmal force, but she dropped out a huge uh, Looney Tune piano on the on on, on the enemy. Uh, that was the enemy she conjured up, mm. and that was her most favorite moment. And I was like, oh wow, you! I always thought you were the more more lore guy, and but no, people uh, enjoy differently in different games. It, it, it's good to ask. Like that little two question can help a lot in the content you create for your next game and the world you build. All right, so I, I kind of want to jump on this since we're kind of like reaching towards the two hour limit mark. I kind of yes. want there, there 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 is a there's a thing that I do in inter monologue where after the break, after you feel refreshed, you know, mm -hmm. we we're done talking about the lighthearted stuff. I would I do enjoy asking some deeper questions. Mm -hmm. So, um, as a world builder oh, yourself, oh, it was it fuck. <laughs> um, well, this one, um, well, more psyche related questions, I guess you could say. So, mm -hmm. um. As a world builder, um, we were touching upon it earlier when Seth was like mentioning talking like historical stuff, and then you know there's elements of representation here and there. Yeah. Um, so in world building, I guess you can also tie in like um, smaller world building, it's small, more small scale stuff like me. Um, there is a point in time where you start pulling from your experiences, right? Um, is there any personable moments that you can remember trying to? attached to moon soon in a sense oh wow uh there's uh, uh there's a lot uh, there's so much actually um it's currently not in the game we're producing right now in the setting we're using right now but mm -hmm. when we were playing right uh uh when i when i first joined the campaign uh, it i think it was already a two-year campaign at that point i joined way mm -hmm. and uh it was already level. They were the players were already at level ten, and um, the thing about hmm, we how do I put it? I'm I, I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, as I just mentioned before, our country is not the most stable of the situations. I I come mm -hmm. from a, a, from, I, I'm I'm in a country where uh, where civil war has been going on for nearly seventy years now. Mm -hmm. uh and with with dictatorships and all these dark elements of the world mm -hmm. uh I, and and i and i play a soldier i play i play a a, a war forge uh in, from this land that is far distance to the uh, the, the current continent called year so the war of two is so much bigger the world of monsoon is still so much bigger mm -hmm. uh this is just one continent that we're focused on in this book right now and uh and i and this was this flying uh, for the for the fantastical side of things right this is a flying uh ancient civilization that had fallen to the ground uh in the last war in the past age and i i'm, I'm just this little young war forge that is rising up from this uh uh from this that uh i was i was born for war i was created for war and of course like like most war forges it's about me finding identity that was the initial story arc I tried to build mm -hmm. uh, as a player, and uh, me and me and John discuss a lot about how we can uh, move forward, how we can uh, make the story more compelling as we play. Right, uh, we play like eight hour long uh, sessions. Uh, I miss those days. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> there was one time we actually take a weekend off and uh, play for thirty six hours. That was oh one my time. God. Uh, yeah, it was fun. <laughs> And then, uh, and and one of the story elements that uh, he put in was um, there is this uh, country of uh, war forges that has gathered uh, very similar to how uh, Aberon has written about like the Lords of Blades and such, but it's much more uh, less com uh, much more complex than what is like uh, just remnants of an old kingdom. Mm -hmm. It's this is an actual civilization that is trying to find its own identity and that is, is rising up from their own civil war as well because like there are multiple factions of the war forges. Who are trying to seek their own redemption uh who be like they can be peaceful uh players or who feel like oh yeah we have to be we're created for war we have to be uh we have to be fighting we are we're mm -hmm. subservient we have to rise up against the uh uh the the uh the flesh beings etc etc and and for me it says that when i first discovered this part of the story in this world uh uh my character is already playing in monsoon uh, to uh, Moonstone for a while now, and we've been we've been going through a rebellion, 
uh, against uh, against the uh, the current ty tyrannical um, uh, oppressors of the, the country already. So this is already pulling a lot from what I spoke in real life mm -hmm. because I'm going through a revolution right now uh, as a person. But even back then, I know a lot of my my parents who has to go through the '88 um, period where there was a lot of protests and dark moments, mm -hmm. uh, and and I was pulling those elements from there. And then when I first discovered this country, it was when we feel that how do I put it? It was it was sort of a, like a therapy session for me at that point almost. Mm -hmm. it, it was when we we started sitting down together. Okay, what do we want to build with this part? Because for, for uh, from John's perspective as well, he wants this to be a story arc that I enjoy. That's one. That that is one key thing. He sit down with me and he he, he talked with me to like, hey, what are you trying to? What do you want to build with it? What do you want to experience with this? And and we put together this backstory of this part of the world where it's very similar to what we had to go through for the past seventy years, where we're we're very we're a divided country that is trying to make sense of what we what we wear, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we, of course, we all work, want freedom and pro a progress of the country, just like the warforges are. They want to have their own thriving country, but they're still divided by so much, um, so long exposure to war before. So that, that, that's what I think those are. Uh, I had a very emotional scene where I, I, I stood up to my king in Moonsoon, mm -hmm. uh, where I was like, just. Uh, I really, uh, I, I pull up my, my crossbow onto him simply saying, because he was trying to sacrifice himself to save the people. And I was just saying, no, you're saving, trying to, you're trying to save one girl, but if you die, there's a million more that will die because of this. Mm -hmm. And I will not let you do that. And I will punch you and I will make you submit to yourself if you are going to pursue this route. And it, it was one of the most visceral, emotional moment for me. Because my character is a foreign, uh, like a person who's out of this world, but is trying to make this world a better place. As he sees this country is going, his, his people is going into ruins in the other country as well. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it just one of the most visceral scenes that I had. And I, I, and I think this is, I think we, I want, um, I, I don't know how Moonstone is going to be, uh, to be exper uh, uh, experienced by uh, most of the people in Myanmar or people from Southeast Asia just yet, of course. But I think this is what um, us, like you said, storytellers can do, is that when we build our worlds and when we have our players invested in pulling from their real life, kind of, uh, real life experience, it just makes everything more visceral it, mm. it it's a moment that i will never forget in my life and that was real mm -hmm. you can call it like i was just sitting at a table and it was just imagination but for me that was real i felt it i felt it just from this retelling i felt it yeah and, and 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 you cannot take that away from me this is something that i experienced as a person and i lived this part mm -hmm. and and um i think this is this is important for war builders to know, one, you have to be respectful enough to not, not to be crushing. Uh, John can basically just like, you know, pull elements out of a history book and just like put it there and like, make it so that I feel hurt. Yeah, mm. he can do that. But no, he actually sat down with me to converse through, okay, what story do we want to tell together? Mm. What elements do you want to see? And yeah, people will say, "Oh, yeah, that's that's spoilers that you get. Uh, your 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 play, you you're telling uh, secrets to your player. You will not enjoy." It. No, it's very important so that your player does not feel offended for showing vulnerability at the table. D and D, or any other role playing game, gets better as the more you invest in, right? Yeah. And and uh, but you don't want to go through such vulnerable vulnerable moments when the other people are not careful of what you're going through because i i that night i i i cried mm -hmm. i was just literally like tears up in my face uh i was really like a, 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 a tortured 
a uh, uh, marsh, uh, a marshal, a uh, uh, military commander who's going up against his king, who is also another player. Mm -hmm. And I was hurt to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I think that is very important for a dungeon master or a storyteller or a world builder to understand that your players will have a, an, 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 an unforgetting experience if you pull from what they, what they have experienced through life. However, you have to be respectful and kind enough to sit down with them and let them know what they're going to go through, mm -hmm. or at least converse with them. What do you feel okay to go through in front of your friends? Mm -hmm. And that 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 is something that I, that I take away as a storyteller, and I try to embody when I DM or or when I create uh, when we when we work on Monster together. We uh, we have these uh, elements of colonialism that is in uh, that is a campaign, but. We want to tell that if this is about a bad system, this is about when, when people consider uh, these bad ideas to be true and promoted it and it turned into uh, a tyrannical situation, like how racism is portrayed in like the Tiffling, which is very relevant to what uh, African Americans uh, had to went through back in the sixties uh, or before that, even before, of course, uh, uh, and uh, how most of our uh, uh, Asian American uh, also, uh, so going through as well, a lot of people here in Asia also have to face a lot of discrimination, and 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 these elements are there, and it actually fools people, uh, pulls people into the game and for immersive pro process. But then again, you're you're having your player in a very vulnerable state, and you have to be kind enough to care about. It. Yeah, that's something that it's important to do, and also be careful of. Yeah, that's, that is definitely a good lesson. Actually, I hope that gets turned into an adventure. <laughs> that sounds like a that sounds like a nice personable adventure to go through. Because mm -hmm. you know, I I've been through a few like D and D adventures where it's more of a, a retelling of of the NPC in front of you rather than mm -hmm. you know the players. And you know, that sounds like that kind of uh, story sounds like something that I'd love to kind of like get to read or at least enjoy as a player. <laughs> Um, Hopefully, when when Musun get published, and then we uh, we get to like more iconic stories, and uh, I get to tell the story of EO thirteen, uh, <laughs> who is this, uh, the Warforge I was playing at. But right now, the iconic character doesn't include the Warforge just yet because uh, you know we have to focus on Musun and the anima, uh, the originators of Musun. So yeah, mm -hmm. my little guy is not there. The iconic characters just yet. Well, all right. Well, guys, it's already at the two hours. So oh yeah, um, oh, Jack, I'm sorry, so fast. Don't worry, we're not ending just yet. Um, oh, I kind of want to ask, uh, what can we expect in the future? Like, um, from what's or what's coming up? Okay. Uh, so what's happening right now? Uh, oh, that, actually, yeah. we're, we're, pre we're preparing for crowdfunding. Uh, hopefully uh, in early Q4. Um, I saw some of the corporate. Uh, it's, it's <laughs> uh, we're, we're trying to uh, have it happen in two months. Uh, mm. Hopefully. Uh, but again, uh, we're going through a lot of uh, situations in Myanmar, and we don't know whether we'll be able to do it because we have a lot of the artwork, the book, and stuff ready. Uh, but at the same time, you know, when, yeah. with things happening, it's it's you can't even plan for what's going to happen in the next two weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is what's happening with us. So we're trying to go for it. But in the meantime, our our, our uh, people. Uh, People who are in the stream, as well as uh, a lot of the, our, our followers in uh, in Twitter, on Twitter, as well as, well as our Discord, can go into our uh, our website at blueblues.com, uh, com, and, uh, and you can download an adventure uh, for free uh, from our website. And you just have to register with your uh, email, and then uh, we'll, it opens up right there, and you can just click download and you, you grab it. Uh, it's, it's it's trails of madness. Uh, if you don't want to be spoiled, do not watch the stream by. Uh, uh, by Big Piku uh, uh, back on uh, August 13th. Mm -hmm. But the, it, it, it is one little aspect of Moons that you can experience right now as we speak. Uh, I, uh, I believe uh, I can send you the link as well. Uh, oh, actually, yeah. Thank you. Uh, you've already put it in there. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, uh, that's what's happening right now. We're trying to make a quick start guide. Uh, I'm not sure whether... You, I think we we've talked back in session zero in January. Yes. After the event, uh, 
uh, and and uh, we we had a we we have a, a campaign uh, called Clores of Iwanot, the name still to be determined, uh, with uh, five iconic adventurers, and uh, that uh, we want to have uh, at least episode one of the campaign and the iconic characters uh, to be a quick start adventure for uh, players to experience the world huge. And we're trying to make that happen. Uh, it's still a work in progress. Excuse me. <clears throat> Uh, we're trying to uh, we're we are hoping to get that ready by next month uh, in September. So those are the two, uh, those are the, the the closest things that's coming up really soon. And uh, and then of course once we have a, uh, a crowdfunding up in uh, hopefully in October, fingers crossed, uh, we will have our campaign. Hey, all right. Uh, with that said, I guess last thing, uh, I'll just, Gabby. I'm gonna twist your your question a little bit as a as a send off. Um, what is one thing you can leave for people who are hoping to get, I guess, get their settings published? What is one like advice, tip, statement, mm -hmm. anything? Okay, um, it's actually like um, okay. I'm gonna go very small first. Um, always listen to your grandma fairy tales. <laughs> uh, no, I'm, I'm, oh yeah, I'm, we, I trust. We have to sit down for that. Uh, yeah. Um, I'm gonna go on another another story. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, it, it was a uh, it was a very wonderful four hour afternoon that I sat down with her and um, she was talking to me about these thirty seven uh, uh, thirty one uh, nets uh, who are like from Burmese folklore and she explained to me like what each net is about, what aspect of the net is about, you know, and it's it's a it's a beautiful day. And then she she asked me after after like two hours of talk. And she's like, Oh, what is this all about, uh, Jack? You, you don't necessarily come here all the time, like and like. Uh, no, we're we're. Uh, I, I was trying. I, I, she's in, she's a seventy year old, uh, mm -hmm. lovely uh, uh, lady. So she she did. I when I I don't want to say it's a video game either. <laughs> so she's like, yeah, it's a, it, it's about a game uh, that I played together with my friends. So we're trying to publish this and like, what's a TT? Uh, I said like something like uh, TTRBG. It's just. Uh, it, it's a game where you uh, where you uh, make stuff to get stuff up together, and she's like, she was so amazed by that. Like she not not not, not amazed, more like quizzed by that. Mm. So, so she's like, uh, I uh, I literally had to sit down with her, pass uh, a D twenty to her, and we did a small little session, a uh, uh, solo yes. session, and, and uh, it was it was it was this most um, how do I put it. It, it was a very simplified D&D game, but she she killed a monster in the most weirdest way, I uh, most newest way that I, 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 I've <laughs> imagined. And at that point, that story has been used to for me to introduce new players to D&D for a while now. I've always used, I used that to my wife. I used that to a friend who wanted to try D&D. Mm -hmm. and, and they all they normally follow the same structure, right? But this old gr grandma sat down with me she went on this uh, peacekeeping crusader route where she she battered troops between the invaders and the defenders, mm -hmm. and she turned into this uh, Judic, uh, wise old woman who who brings this uh, elements of uh, the the spirits of the world uh, earth together to uh, to form a truce, and it was so far out. <laughs> I was just like amazed by what she kept like, oh, I want to do this thing. And like in the most innocent way possible. But I was like, holy shit, that is amazing. I got to have to write that down. Oh my God. Yeah. Uh, so so um, I would say uh, my advice for making a setting of a book is that first thing is that you need to open your eyes and listen to stories. It's, it's, there are so many stories that is happening around you that we would not notice. We come from Tolkien or, or games, but like your grandmother can have a very, very interesting story to tell you. Uh, so open your mind, uh, keep a lookout. And just like Neil deGrasse Tyson has mentioned, uh, it would mark uh, about a quote about Mark, Mark Twain is that you get the truth. You, uh, I'm paraphrasing again, you try to, un you understand the truth, you get the truth, and then you twist it to your liking. So, mm -hmm. So get all that lore, all the research, open your mind and be uh, uh, let your creative spirit loose and then grab it together and then solidify it into a little piece of information and knowledge. 
and then twist it to your liking to make it compelling as you like, because that's your creation. So that's my basic advice for having a creative process. And especially for a setting, especially for a setting of your culture, you have to listen to your grandma. <laughs> <laughs> All right. With that said, Jack, thank you so much for uh, joining us today, guys. Chat, everyone in chat, be sure to go check them out. Check out the entire, you know, Moonsoon, Blue Blue, uh, Blue Bella Studios, and as well as Jack on Twitter, as well as go sign up for that free adventure. Keyword free. Come on, do it. This, all you need is to sign up your email. Um, but yeah, Jack, thank you so much to um, hanging out, vibing with us, uh, you know, sharing your expertise, sharing your experiences. I am looking forward to seeing it happen in two months. I'm knocking on wood for you, but I, I really hope it happens. Same here. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you, Vin, for having me here as well. This is this this is definitely gonna be the highlight of my week. <laughs> yeah. Same, actually. This is this has been a great talk. It's very yeah. uplifting. As Shin was saying, very wholesome. I was not yes, expecting was, it for some reason. Touch as well. So like I was I was so touched by what, what Shin mentioned, like uh, how this chat has turned so wholesome. Like, oh my god, thank you so much. <laughs> Um, yeah, with that said, guys, this officially marks the end of the episode. I'm going to be looking for someone to um, raid. So feel free to hang out if you want to, Jack. But yeah, yeah. Chat, how do you guys feel? How is How did the stream go? What do you guys think? Any thoughts, concerns, questions? Nothing too deep, though. Ooh. If you want to drop any questions, just look for us on Twitter or jump into the Discord and you can ask us there as well. Uh, uh, it's, it's, uh, you can also always message me as well to, uh, if you want to ask me questions directly. Yeah. How's your whiskey sitting there? <laughs> oh yeah, it, it's um, it's it's needed. You know what? Actually, I, I'm I I'm, I I know that this is not a full bar situation as well. But this is I, I love the vibe that we're having with, with, with whiskey and mojito in hand. You know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I miss it. I'm I miss going to bars and hanging out with friends. Oh, this is the this is the closest I can get. <laughs> That is true. That is true. Um, in the past, a bit in the past two years, this is the closest I've ever been to like actually vibing out and and, and drinking at a bar. That's true. Mm. I, I I always like you know you know the um the show on Critical Role where they uh, sit down and have behind a two sheets or um, some behind the sheets or something. Behind two sheets, yeah. Behind the sheet. Uh, no, I think yeah, I think it's behind the sheet. Yeah, true. Uh, with uh with uh with uh, with Brian. And I, I always like the vibe of making cocktails. I'm fascinated by cocktails, actually. Uh, I don't, I don't know how to make it. I just know how to make stuff, stuff on the rock. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, this is, this is, this is one of my dreams being fulfilled. Hey. Thank you. Don't Seba, you should play D and D sometime. Just saying. Anyways, chat. We're gonna head over to a familiar DM. You guys all know him as Final Traumatic. It looks like he's doing something based on SCP in the D&D &D uh, &D system. Um, yeah. So here's the raid message. Y'all know what it is. Gift of Gabby, thank you for the follow. And everyone else who came by. Who else followed? Um, Tommy. And God damn it, Tom. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. But if you really want to watch the VOD, we talked about world building today with Jack and, their, um, and the upcoming Project Moon soon. But yeah, yeah guys. There's a raid message. Make sure you copy that. Make sure you drop it once you get over there. Um, you say like it's easy to find a new proof campaign. There's always a new proof campaign. Trust. <laughs> there always is. Um, but yeah. Jack, anything? Right, guys, thank, thank you for the thank you for the uh, conversation. Uh, hope to hear, uh, hope, hope to give you Moonsoon soon as well. All right. Good night. Good night, guys. <laughs>